Level 3 of this induction heater, we're going to talk about building the coil holder head. Now as you can see, this is a piece of <coughs> nylon, solid block of nylon. This is available on eBay. You can get an inch and a half diameter by 12 inch piece. It's not that expensive. Now these pieces here are actually were one of these. Now this is a different one, the tip's a little bigger, but the one you'll be getting has a smaller tip. And you cut this piece off and then drill the hole out in the center to the size of this wire. Then you have to drill a hole from the side on one of these flats and put in this screw. You have to thread it. It's a <clears throat> 440 by 3 8 brass. And these are available at Lowe's. Now, <clears throat> inside of this piece of plastic over here, inside this, these holes are drilled out and threaded with a quarter inch pipe tap so that they can screw in and be rigid. Now, what you do to get the wire in, you drill out the hole in the end of this fitting so that this piece of quarter inch copper tubing fits in it. You take a two inch length of this quarter inch copper and solder it into the hole in the bottom of here. Okay? And then you slide your cable through holes that you drill in this block and the size hole that you drill for this two gauge cable is exactly the size you need to be able to run this tap in and thread these holes up here for these connectors. So you slide the cable up through and out the top, no coiling of course, and then you will be taking this copper tube, will be sticking out the bottom of this fitting, two inches. You strip back an inch of insulation on this wire, slide it in the copper tube, and crimp it. Now, they sell crimpers at Lowe's for like cable TV cable, cheap ones with red handles. They work really good for crimping this copper. Once you crimp it, you'll never pull it out. And then you'll have your end, it'll be pushed up out with wire on it, and you simply just pull it back in and screw in this fitting into the plastic. And then you're done with that one and you move on to the next one. Now the other end of the cable is just these, you know, regular crimp on lugs. And we're going to talk a little bit about this support bracket now. Now this support bracket is bent and it actually fastens on to the heat sink over here with some screws. Now this has to be isolated from these terminals. So what you do is you need to make these isolators. You can see these little isolators. They're made out of this same circuit board that everything else was made out of. You take a 7 8 hole saw and you drill holes and you take the piece that you cut out becomes a fiber washer. Now this is only quarter inch, so you have to drill the hole that's left in the center out to 5 16 Because these pieces here are 5 16 threaded brass rod. They have a hole drilled in the center where this copper wire comes out of the circuit board and they're soldered in. And then this bracket right here has half inch holes drilled in it. But this piece is only 5 16 So at Lowe's they sell nylon washers that are 5 16 ID, half inch OD. Those go in the space in between here. You got a fiber washer on the inside, then you got the plastic washers in the hole, and fiber washer on this side. All these nuts and washers are all non-magnetic stainless steel. And that gives you a support bracket where these aren't going to be ripping off. Because this whole thing, this unit here, is going to mount to the top of this power supply. Now this is a 24 volt, 20 amp power supply. It's an SP500-24, meanwhile. I bought this on eBay for $31 used. 
Now, this is exactly the right size on top for the heat sink that I'm using on my board, and it can be screwed on. When complete, the whole thing is going to go in this case from Global, and it'll have a, a um, voltage gauge and amperage gauge on the front of it, and these two connectors here will stick out the front to bolt on the wires because I want this to be portable and I want it to plug in the wall because I'm going to use it to heat up nuts and bolts that won't come off on different cars and trucks because it's faster than a torch and it only heats what you need to heat so that's it for this video and I'll be showing another video after the thing goes in the case and some tests with some different size coils